Four years ago, at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, students across the country were forced to take their learning online. While things have returned to normal, research shows many are still falling behind academically. This is according to a new study released Tuesday by the NWEA, a testing company that works with more than 9,000 American school systems. For the 2023 to 2024 school year, average math and English test scores for students in nearly all grades were down from what they were pre-pandemic. Scores are at a new low from the previous low. Karen Lewis joins us now. She's the Director of Research and Policy Partnerships at NWEA and is the lead author of the study. So Karen, it, remind us again exactly whose scores are worse in these findings. Well, it's hard to pick just one group to be the most worried about who's doing worst. But when I look at the data, I'm most concerned about middle school students. These are students for whom we're seeing the least evidence of recovery. And for them, the gaps are not shrinking and in fact are widening to a lower point than we have seen throughout the pandemic. I'm also most concerned about students that were already struggling prior to the onset of the pandemic. Students that are marginalized due to socioeconomic factors, due to race, ethnicity. Those were kids that were hardest hit by the pandemic and also remain furthest from recovery. And Karen, was there no improvement since getting out of the thicket of, of COVID or is it more there was some improvement, now there's backsliding? That's the consternating part that in the 21-22 school year, we were encouraged to see that growth had returned to pre-pandemic levels. And so we concluded, we got out the confetti cannons and felt like the worst is behind us, that students have started to recover. But data from the last two school years has not supported that conclusion. And students are making progress, but they're doing so at rates that are lower compared to pre-pandemic trends, which means we're not shrinking the gaps. And in many cases, they continue to widen. So I'm keeping in mind two groups. There's the groups that come from those already socioeconomically stressed parts of the country, which have always had difficulty given the lack of resources and so forth. And then there's the, the other group. Um, are, is it just because of COVID or is it other things? Are there are other contributing factors that have resulted in this picture that you've painted for us here. I think it's a complicated nest of factors and COVID was certainly the initial uh, uh, shock to the system that has disrupted education in such a way that we see these detrimental effects. But uh, the lingering impacts of COVID, particularly chronic rates of absenteeism that are higher than ever before, uh, I think keep kids from the classroom and that keeps them from learning. So there's no silver bullet to get us out of this mess, but there's a lot of contributing factors that we need to be targeting. And let's now focus to what maybe is working. Um, Two questions. The first one is, do we know what to target to make things better? Are there, is there a list of at least things to target? And then I'll ask you how you target them in the next question. Well, I, I want to be clear that our data focus on reading and math test scores, and that's one thin slice of the way kids have been impacted by this pandemic. And there are other factors to consider their social and emotional well-being uh, being a chief concern. But these data suggest that we are seeing levels of achievement in math and reading that are lower compared to pre-pandemic trends. And so what can be done um, to address these issues? Does it mean uh, small tutoring groups? Are there, some, are there some approaches that have worked, Karen, to try to reverse these trends? So we know that happened during the pandemic was kids lost out on learning opportunities. And so the obvious solution is we need to add back in and double down on getting them additional learning opportunities. And you've named high dosage tutoring as a commonly used intervention. Summer school is also quite popular. Those are the types of strategies that get kids connected to additional learning opportunities that research suggests will work. The issue here is that the research that supports those tools was done in pre-pandemic times on very limited samples where it's very easy to implement. We're now asking schools to scale that to an exponential degree, which we know has been very challenging on the ground. Schools are not nimble entities that can turn around and at the drop of a hat be able to get tutoring to thousands of kids. So we know schools are doing the right things and we hope that they continue. Uh, but we also want to be real about the challenges that they face with the sunsetting of ESSER, the federal dollars dedicated to support recovery efforts are going away this fall. And that does not match the timeline with which kids will actually recover from the impacts of this pandemic. So we will be asking schools and districts to continue those efforts with a reduced budget, which we understand is a very challenging set of circumstances. So essentially do a great deal more with less money. So what's, is there any uh, 
where does help come from? I mean, could the private money, um, do, do states need to um, up their education budgets? Does this need to be a federal push? Um, any, where can new resources be found? I think we will take new resources wherever we can find them. Uh, I do hope the federal government will reconsider uh, finding additional dollars to support states or schools and districts, but I think states are also going to be called into question to be able to step in. I think of this uh, like if a hurricane swept through your town and did severe damage to your house, you wouldn't pay your contractor a set amount of money and hope that the damage would be restored. Instead, you'd say, here's money, keep going until the problem is fixed. We've essentially said to schools, we're going to give you a fixed amount of money, but now we know that's not enough. Those dollars helped and are the right uh, ways to support kids, but more is needed. And so we don't want to leave schools and districts to carry the bill alone when they, we know they're not magicians. They can't just pull money out of a hat to keep these interventions going and are going to rely on federal and state support to be able to support kids. Karen Lewis with NWEA. Really great data and great analogy. Thanks so much for being with us.